G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to solve a fairly challenging relative motion problem. So this is what we've got. We've got this one link right here, which has a pin on its end, which we've labeled point A. And this pin is constrained to move within the slot of this larger link just here. And we're given a little bit of extra information. We're told that the slotted link is rotating at a constant angular velocity omega naught is equal to 4 radians per second. And you can see here that omega naught is going to be in the clockwise direction. We're also given some dimensions. We know that this is 250 millimeters and we know this is 400 millimeters. And we're asked, when theta is equal to 30 degrees, find the velocity of pin A. And this is the objective of this video. I plan to solve this question. And in the next video, I'm going to be solving the second question, find the acceleration of pin A. Well, let's first remind ourselves what the velocity equation is when we're dealing with rotating reference frames. The equation is the velocity of point A is going to be equal to the velocity of point B plus V rel plus V P relative to B. Now I'm going to be explaining all of these terms shortly, but first let's talk about point B. Point B is where we keep our relative reference frame. So I'm going to define point B being right here on this pin. I think that'll be the easiest point to choose to be point B. And I'm going to choose our relative reference frame x, y like this. Remember, our relative reference frame moves with our object. It rotates with the object, right? So this is going to be what I'm going to call x and y just here. Now, before I get too involved with the mathematics here, let me try and show you what's happening conceptually first. Well, because this blue link is actually moving upwards like this, you'd expect it to force this link to also move upwards like that. So let's guess that the angular velocity of this link is actually counterclockwise at this instant. Now, under this assumption that this has an angular velocity counterclockwise at this instant, what can we say about the velocity of point A? Well, because point A is actually a pin on this link right here, you can say that the velocity of A will be purely upwards from circular motion. Now, we don't know the magnitude of this velocity yet. All we know that it's going to be omega r, but we do know its direction, and that's enough information so far. So let me actually draw the vector underneath this term just here, just to give us a graphical understanding of what's going on. We know VA will be facing upwards, and we'll have a magnitude of omega r, which we'll have to solve for later. Now let's consider VB here. Now because of the way we've defined point B, we've defined it to be this pin just here, the velocity of B will be zero, right? The pin isn't going anywhere. So this velocity will be zero, and I'll just denote that by a dot just here. It's got no velocity vector associated with it. Now let's talk about this VREL term just here. VREL is the velocity of point A relative to our rotating link. So we don't know whether this um, point A will be moving up the slot or down the slot. We have no idea at this point. But um, let's assume that it's moving down the slot at this particular instant with a velocity VREL. Once again, we can test out the, valid the validity of this assumption later when we go through the mathematics. So this is VREL right here, and I'm just going to draw the vector like this, VREL. Now let's talk about VP relative to B. Point P is a point on our link, which is at the same position as point A. So I'm just going to draw point P right there. This is going to be point P. Now because it's on the actual link just here, that means that it will abide by circular motion formulas. And in fact, because omega is in this direction, you can tell that VP relative to B will actually be like that, tangential to the circular path this rod is swooping out. So, and in fact, because this is um, rotating with an angular velocity omega naught, you can even tell that it has a velocity um, omega naught times by r. So let me actually draw this vector right here as well. And omega naught r, there we go. So it turns out this is actually a great starting point. We've got a very visual description of what's going on. Now let's try and break this up into i and j components. Well, let's start with the right-hand side. What is the i and j component of VB? Well, it's just going to be 0 in both i and j. What about VREL? Well, notice that VREL, we don't know its magnitude, but we do know it's purely in the x direction. right? So that means we can write this as VREL and 0. That's VREL i plus 0j. 
Now let's talk about this term. This right here can be written as zero i because no part of this velocity vector is in the i direction plus omega naught r because all of the velocity is in the positive j direction. All right, now let's talk about this VA term right here. Now we know it's facing perfectly upwards, but that's not good enough. We actually need to deconstruct this vector into both I and J components. So let's draw that here. This is gonna be its J component right here, and this is gonna be its I component right here. We know this is gonna be 90 degrees, and we know from this that this must be equal to theta which means that we know this is gonna be 90 minus theta, which means that we know this right here is gonna be theta. So let's find the I component of our VA vector. Well, because it's facing up this way and X is defined downwards this way, it's going to be negative. It's gonna be minus omega R times by sine theta, times by sine theta. And we know this right here is going to be plus omega R times by cosine theta, like that. And presto, we've deconstructed the velocity of A in the X and Y directions according to our relative axes. So there we have it. We've deconstructed our velocity vectors into I and J components. Now let's equate I and J components to find some unknowns. So let's begin by equating, I will equate J terms. So basically, I'm just focusing on this bottom row just here. And what happens when we do that? Well, here we will have omega r cosine theta. And here we will have, it's quite boring, it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus omega naught r. That's what happens when we just focus on this bottom row just here. And we can actually solve for omega, the angular velocity of this link, algebraically now. And so let me actually write that just here. Omega is gonna be equal to uh, omega naught r, omega naught r divided by r cosine theta, like that. And if you plug this into your calculator, noticing that omega naught is four, r is 400, little r is 250, and theta is equal to 30, you actually get an answer of 7.39 radians per second. And, and that helps you find this angular velocity right here. Now, there's one thing I want to focus on before I equate I terms. Notice that this is positive. This answer is positive 7.39, which means that our assumption that this is actually in the counterclockwise direction is true. That's good. So we can actually say that it is actually in the counterclockwise direction. If it was negative 9, for example, that means it would actually be facing the other way. All right, now let's equate I terms. Let's equate I terms. Okay, so that means we're focusing on this top row just here, and what will we get? Well, right here we'll have minus omega r sine theta, and that's gonna be equal to, let's see, it'll be zero plus v rel plus zero plus zero just there. And that's a pretty boring thing to evaluate. That just means VREL is gonna be equal to this guy. And so let's write that down. VREL is in fact gonna be equal to this guy. And I won't bother writing it down. I'll just give you the answer. VREL is gonna be minus 923.76 millimeters per second. That's what you get when you plug this in right here. Now let's also talk about its direction briefly. We've shown earlier that VREL is purely in the I direction. So let's write an I unit vector just there and turn this into a vector. There we go, we've got its magnitude and we've got its direction. Now we've kind of deviated from the question a little bit. We wanna find the velocity of pin A and so far I've just found the angular velocity of this link and VREL. What on earth is VA? Well, it turns out all we need to do is we just need to evaluate these terms individually. It's gonna be equal to, VA is gonna be equal to this guy, which is minus omega r sine theta, and then omega r cosine theta. So it's gonna be this i plus this j. And when you put that into your calculator, you're actually gonna get minus 923.76 i plus 1600 j millimeters per second. 
That is the velocity of point A. And let me just box that off to signify its importance. If you wanted to, you could even find its magnitude by squaring both of these terms and square rooting the answer. But that's not what we're asked to do. We're just asked to find for the velocity vector VA. And we are done. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to find the acceleration of pin A and involve something called the Coriolis effect. Strap yourselves in.